like that about this fight. Sometimes you make a fight that's 12, 13 weeks away. You know, you've been in camp for a long time. Both of you guys had to fly back from the States for this press conference as well. I didn't think this fight would get over the line. It's here, it's happening. The perfect fight for both of you right now. Yeah, I was ready and waiting for you guys to start what you guys were starting about. You know, once the fight was mentioned, I was like, yeah, you know me, I'm always up for a fight, so it doesn't take long to set a fight to me, especially one like this. Seven years ago, over, since you two faced off mm -hmm. at Tower Bridge, a lot has changed. What do you think the difference is now between you and him? I mean, right back then, two hungry, inexperienced guys who gave us a wild night. How have things changed, and, and we still expect that same crazy night at the O2 on well, August 12th? We've both been through a lot, both of us a lot, but we're still chasing improvement, you know, so we've got new teams, new people around us, and um, I think it's going to be an even better fight than it was the first time, because we're both more experienced, more skilled now, and we've been through stuff, up and downs in fights, obviously. I've had my rough, he's had his rough, you know, we both have three losses as well, so it'll be a good fight, you know, we've we still got a lot of hunger in us, and I'm, I can't wait to get in there and have some, man. There's always a lot of analysis, a lot of criticism as well. Mm -hmm. You've seen AJ throughout his career. Where do you think he's at in his career now? And, and this is a fight you obviously have a lot of confidence going into. I don't know and I don't care. I just prepare for the best version of him. You know what I mean? I, I don't think I, uh, a lot of people saying this, that and the other. That's, that's for them to say and not for me to worry about. I just worry about preparing for the best version of him, whether he's still there or not. I don't really care. You know I mean? I'm coming to fight and I ain't got nothing to lose, so I'm all good. I remember that first press conference, you guys were in, I think it was a public workout. You were like hanging around with each other, waiting for each other outside the weights room. Mm. You matured a lot since then. You still, you still that, that aggressive guy that that's, you think both of you still got that same edge, that same chip on your shoulder. You've experienced a lot. You've achieved a lot. You've both made a lot of money. You're still the same competitor right now. You still want to take this guy out? I'm calm, but like I say, fuck around and find out, you yeah. know? The more you fuck around, the higher the chances you'll find out. So, you know, that's, that's how my mindset, man. One, Never change. One question I keep getting from a lot of the media here is, is this must win for both? Is this career ending for the other one? <laughs> that's I know. my whole career with Matrim. Much win, fight, much, must win, fight, must win, fight. Every fight, Matrim's been like that. But what happens if you lose this fight on August the 12th? I'm not, I'm, I'm not thinking about it. We'll see what happens. And I take it, as I get older, I learn to take it day by day and appreciate today. Worry about tomorrow and tomorrow comes, man. So let's see, you yeah. know. And finally, you believe you win this fight by stoppage. I know you're not massive on predictions, but both of you guys have had stuff to say about the other one in terms of where they're at in their career. You believe you have the power to take this guy out on August 12th? I have the power to take anybody out, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm listen, I'm focusing on getting a victory. If, it, if a knockout comes, it comes. But well, I'll just try and get the knockout, you know what I mean? But obviously, you know, we... I listen to what Buddy says and just what Buddy says, so we see what he says, but... You know, I'm a dog and I'm always trying to bite regardless, you know, until the end of the fights. Been fights have been up in points and I tried to get the knockout in the last rounds and been down and, you know, so. AJ, yep. saw you in Dallas last week. Yep. Everything, every conversation about this all. How come you didn't come to Florida to see me in the Florida to see the AJ? You see what I'm saying? You be bullshitting, man. What? You be bullshitting. What? You went all the way to Dallas to see AJ, you didn't come to Florida to see me. You be bullshitting. I didn't man. think you were going to take the fight. You'd be bullshitting, man. I didn't think you'd take you the gotta fight. you got to stop that. Yeah. you got to stop that. Seriously. Okay. Yeah. I didn't think you'd take the fight. You didn't think you'd take the fight? No. You're going to Mexico anyway. You didn't think you'd take the fight? Yeah, I was, going, I was going Dallas to Mexico. Uh, it was on a stopover. Uh, okay. Can I ask one you. question? Go on. What does AJ's balls stay like? <laughs> <laughs> you might find out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be teabagging you on the turn table. I'm going to find out. <laughs> Get your own lines, bro. Come on, man. Get your own lines. Relax, bro. Trust Get your own lines, man. Anyway. Yo. AJ. What's happening? This was the fight you said. I kept throwing up these other names at you for August 12th. You just didn't seem up for anybody else but well, Dillian White. I'm definitely up for fighting. Mm, there's a lot of names in the division, for sure. But at the same time, look at what this creates as well. I'm a fighter. And I understand that economics are business as well. And this does, this does good business. Also, is it a case of, you know, when you fought Jermaine Franklin, how much were you really up for that fight uh, yeah, as yeah. well? You up for this fight? You, when you look across at this guy, you've got a tremendous rivalry. A lot has changed. I don't, you know, really, when you I don't together... really look at Dylan as a rival, though. No? No, no. Just another body, really. They got a lot of hate for me. A lot of I, people. I ain't got no hate, see, bro. I got no hate for you, bro. A lot of people hate on me, so. A lot of people, not me, brother. 
Like, um, so with Dylan, I don't really look at him as a rival. I just watch myself. I'm worrying about my lane and what I'm trying to do. So with Jermaine Franklin, yeah, I was definitely up for that fight, 100%. Um, but it was, it was respect to Franklin. I could have I made it as easy as I wanted to. I could have made it as difficult as I wanted to. You know, coming off those losses, get the W, seven-week training camp, boom, bam, we're here now, ready to rock and roll. Like, so I understand my process, and that's why I worry about myself, not what everyone else's opinion is. I know what I've got to do. When we look back to that night at the O2, I think we were both different, different fighters then, both quite naive, both a little bit inexperienced as well. People Even talk about if you've still got like, that it's finishing ago. desire, but do you think this is the kind of fight where we, we see that against a, an aggressive fighter in Dillian White? Boxing is about fundamentals, right? There's two ways you can skin a cat, knock out or outclass someone with your fundamentals. So it's whatever way I want to go about it, I'll do it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you exactly what's going to happen because let's be real, like everything I say today is irrelevant. From the experience I've had from seven years ago, I know when that bell goes, it doesn't matter what I've said, what I've eaten, what I've been through in my life. It's just about getting down and fighting to win one way or another. So I don't know. You'll find out, though. What made you take this fight with this risk ahead of? Everybody knows about the Wilder fight and that and the, the, the negotiations. Forget the, the... Wilder and them lot. Them lot have been doing my head for so many years. Like you lot have seen now the shenanigans in the heavyweight division. Even with, uh, I'll be real, like Fury saying that he was training for Usyk, Sugar Hill come out and said that, no, I'm not training him. What do you mean I'm training him for a heavyweight championship fight? You can see all the lies that's been going on. So I don't really waste my time with time wasters. It's only a fight. I just want to fight, get on with it. I'm going to be 34 this year. I'm moving on. So... Happy birthday. Respect, brother. Getting old now, you know what I mean? So just crack on while I'm here. I'm not really wasting my time waiting for people, chasing people. From the day when I started fighting, even from the amateurs, you can see the, tra the trajectory I've been on. Ready to get down, ready to put my neck on the line or fight whoever. And it's still like that. Dylan is a very credible, solid uh, opponent. Aside from what everyone calls a rivalry, I have to have an underlying respect for every man that steps in the ring. And I have that, which is also going to make me raise my game. So, yeah, let's go, man. I could fight now. Do you know what I'm saying? It's in your heart. That's what matters. So whether people think Franklin technically... I'm a fighter there, and the W's and that is just, it is what it is. I just want to fight. One interesting dynamic is the new trainers both had a fight. I've got a brilliant trainer. I've got a serious trainer now. So, yeah, we're going to see, like, where that development takes. I said about uh, Buddy's camp Very good flying, trainer. your camp flying as well. Errol yes. Spence, the Charlos, Ryan Garcia in camp now with you as well. Must be a great buzz. Very warm in that gym, but a great buzz. Yeah, it is hot. No one told me about the Texas heat, but we survive. Um, now, with, with the rest of the team in the gym, big credit to them as well. It's not really a gym in, in the sense where it's like we're there to catch jokes and laugh. One thing I do pick up on, though, is um, work ethic. And remember, for sure, I was in the gym on my own a lot of the time, right? I always felt like being isolated was beneficial for me because I can focus when I moved away from the GB setup. But ultimately, you can only kind of... Like, we're, we see and we do from a baby to now, you know? So now I'm even seeing like other athletes in the gym running further than me. I'm like, this mother, you know what I'm saying? This mother, how's he running further? Hitting a heavy bag longer than me. It makes me step up my game. And uh, with an underlying respect for my opponents, with the environment, with the fighting instincts I have, with the fighting IQ I have, if I put it all together, we're ready to get on this train again and rock and roll. I'm looking forward to it. Finally, Dillian talked about this fight maybe better than the first fight. You expect it to be different to the first fight? Wow. First, second, third, this is just the fight. It doesn't matter about what it's better than. It's just, it, none of it's relevant until the final bell, if it gets that far. So, do you think we hear the final bell? I haven't really, uh, I've been meditating on my performance rather than where I'm, how I'm going to end the fight. I haven't got that fight. We shall see. I'll let you know. Uh, what's it, the Friday before the fight, where my head's at? Yeah. But right now, it's a pro we're going through a process. Finally, Dillian, just over four weeks to go. Mm -hmm. Back on the plane, back out to Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready yeah. to give British fight fans a hell of a night on August 12th. 
it's hot as hell in Florida, man, and I love it. It's good vibe, you know. Um, we got Sergey Kovalov, Callum Smith, Dennis. These are the boys in camp, you know. Obviously, some new guys, Zizzo, um, all these other young guys, Khalil. So it's good. It's good. It's good to be around. It's a proper fight environment. I'm not home, you know. I'm not home where I'm bothered with my dogs and family and stuff. I'm, I'm away from it, so I can just focus on that, you know. And our gym is a laughing environment. We like to laugh in the gym and have a joke. But it's serious, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm quite relaxed, you know what I mean? I'm relaxed, I have a joke with the people. I can't sit Richard down because being a big black heavyweight, a lot of time people get a bit like, oh, is he, what mood is he in? But I'm always smiling and trying to help the guys to relax and help them also to feel a bit of culture and feel relaxed around big heavyweights also because a lot of these guys are young, middleweight kids, you know what I mean? And they feel kind of scared to come up to you and talk to you and stuff. So I just try and create a friendly environment, man. And finally, no doubt in your mind, August 12th at the O2 Arena, mm -hmm. you take care of business against this man. That's the plan, man. That's the plan. You know, obviously, you know, um, <laughs> I've had three losses. I've avenged one. I'll not avenge the other two. You know, I've avenged them two, then I don't care about boxing after that. You know, that's where I'm at. AJ, finally, no doubt in your mind, victorious. Yeah. At the O2, it's been an incredible stomping ground for you, never beaten there. And a huge night for your career as well. Massive night for my career. So, yeah. Victorious, 100%. That's my goal, that's my plan, and that's my motivation. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Respect to the team. May the best man win. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Dillian, Buddy, Alfie. August 12th, 